then about three hours ago, two hours ago, two and a half hours ago, something like that, the doctor came in and was going to release me, but due to the being a new medication they put me on today, they want me to stay overnight for they can monitor the new medication. Then I get released. I'm thinking, I don't know for sure, but I think I get to go home on the 5th of July, which is still when I plan to go home in the beginning. I just don't get to go back to Cebu. So I'm going to make those changes, but until someone verifies stuff, which where I get anything verified, um, I don't know. On the 1st of July, we finally got released. And that was a hell of a thing. Uh, we, I started telling him at 7 a.m., I'm getting out today. I'm getting out today. And I, I went out by 9 o'clock. I'm leaving. I'll kick the freaking window out if I have to. Jenny was right behind me on this. At 9 a.m., they said, okay, you're getting out. We're bringing you the bill. We didn't get the bill till 11 a.m., which put us into another day. So we had to pay for that. The bill was quite expensive. Jenny said more than most Filipinos make in a year, maybe two years, she said. I had to pay that before they let me get, go out. So we finally got everything paid for, got everything done. Still have no idea what's wrong with me. They're just um, telling me I gotta be quarantined, which we went and got that taken care of. Uh, but they won't let us go without going on a special taxi. And the special taxi wouldn't be there at the 8 o'clock at night. But Jenny jumped on her phone and got a hold of a friend who knew somebody who got us a special taxi. We had to pay for it. He was there by noon and we were out of there. I have no video of that happening that I could find. I thought I took video, but I had some a corrupt file that took out some of my videos. So I may be able to retrieve it later when I get a chance. But right I had um, noticed on Tuesday, I think it was, or Wednesday, I had uh, seen double vision, <clears throat> and I thought it was because my eyes were just really tired because I hadn't been sleeping. So I um, called my doctor at home in the, um, in America, and she's the one who suggested I go see uh, the hospital. Well, I had no facial openers. I had no one noticed any difference on me. I noticed no difference other than everything was double vision. So if I actually had a stroke or not, I do not know. We're going with the idea that I had a minor one, um, but I don't know what it is. I just, I have double vision and right now I have the issue where I can't get an eye patch to cover my eye real well. So I have to hold it closed. And if I put anything on it that's, that hasn't let any light in, it really throws my equilibrium off. If I have my eyes open and walking, if I hold my head, And I got a lot to tell you about the hospital to stay. That was a nightmare. Oh my God, a nightmare. You would not believe how it worked. And we were told afterwards by people that live here, that's a private hospital. You don't want to go to that hospital. And, and they saw that I was an American, so they just racked things up. They were doing double tests on me for the same test twice in a row. Oh, I got a bill out of this world. Anyway. Uh, Jenny was unbelievable how she stepped up and took care of everything and did everything. Oh, I'm going to do a video just on her. But um, those will all be on our channel. This is the only ones going to be on Facebook. The rest will be on our channel. And um, you ask me, I'll try to get to our channel. But that's it. I just want you to know I'm safe. Going home is going to be a big chore. I'm hoping that it goes okay. It's going to be, I got to do a layover. And I'm right now because of how my eyes are. I feel great, I have, I do okay, but if I just close my eye, and if I cover it like this, and hold my eye like this, I get along pretty good, but I can't wear my glasses. I put my glasses on with cotton or something on my eye, and that little light that comes through, it throws me off, and I run into things, I can't, I'm very unstable. We try to get me an eye patch here that go over your eye, can't find them anywhere, so, um, I'm like a little old man. I'm not gonna be able to get on the plane by myself. I'm gonna need help. So Jenny's made arrangements for the for that. That girl is unbelievable. She is going to take because we can only get one flight to Cebu in the whole country from our area. One flight. It was only on the fourth, which worked out because I need to be the fifth in um to take off. 
So she found that a three and a half hour boat, um, bus ride, she can get a flight up and meet me in Cebu. So, and she refused to take no. We fought over this like you would not believe. I, th I thought it was stupid, but she's going to drive up three and a half hours to get on a plane, to fly in. She'll get in roughly an hour after I get in. She's made arrangements for taxi drivers to get me. People take me to the airport. Arrangements to get me on the plane. She told me to wait at the airport. She gets there. She's taking me to the hotel. She's already booked the hotel and stuff for us. Then she's going to take me back to the to go. She will send me off. And she has a four-hour wait to her plane to go home. Well, then when she lands, she has a six-and-a-half-hour bus ride to get to her home. And she's going to land late at night. Luckily, she has a cousin in that town that said contacted her and they will let her stay. This girl is totally amazing. I've never been treated like this. I don't think anybody's ever loved me after meeting this lady.